David Skidmore, and today we're going to continue talking about the double lateral strokes, particularly one sticking. One, two, four, three. <laughs> This is a very idiomatic sticking on the marimba, which means it's very comfortable, it sounds great on the instrument. So let's jump right into the exercises. Warm-up number one is just the first measure of the etude repeated many, many times. So start at the slowest marked tempo of about quarter equals 60. As you continue to increase the tempo, remember to stay relaxed. Everything you play in this lesson should be very smooth and very flowing. When playing double lateral strokes, there's a tendency uh, for them to come out uneven. Like maybe the first note out of every two notes is louder than the second note. Or maybe the rhythm isn't quite right because the two notes are a little bit too scrunched together. So that's what uh, warm up number two is all about. As you work on this exercise, listen to the evenness of the alternating notes and try and mimic that evenness when you're playing the double lateral strokes. Just like with all the other lessons, be sure to play these exercises at all different dynamic levels. In this lesson in particular, the etude associated with the lesson asks you to play double lateral strokes at a really wide dynamic range. So use these exercises as a, as a moment to sort of practice becoming really comfortable with your double lateral strokes at any different stick height and therefore any different dynamic level. <laughs> A lot of the etude associated with this lesson is really repetitive, which means that a lot of the etude will be probably pretty quick to learn. But there are two measures in particular in the etude that are less repetitive and therefore might take a little bit more time to get the notes in your hands. When I'm having trouble learning a particular passage or a particular measure in a piece of music, I like to make an exercise out of it. That way I am simultaneously warming up my hands, working on a technique that I need to work on, and learning the notes to the piece that I'm trying to play. So that's exactly what I did with warm up number three and warm up number four. In warm up number three, we're focusing on the notes in measure 47 from the A2. That's one of those measures that is a little bit less repetitive and maybe takes a little bit longer to learn. So let's get the metronome going at the slow end of our tempo range, quarter equals 80. And we're gonna play uh, the notes from measure 47 in block chords as half notes. Notice my bar placement when I'm playing these notes. Uh, as often as I can, I'm playing in what is essentially the ideal playing spot on the marimba, just off of the resonator. So not directly above the resonator, but just slightly above or below it. In this case, I'll be playing above it. But on some of the flat notes on the upper manual of the keyboard here, there's not enough time to get all the way to that ideal playing spot. So instead, I'll play on the edge of the bar which also gets a really wonderful, open, full sound. You always want to start thinking about bar placement at the very beginning, like right when you're learning the notes. Because if you go through the whole process of learning the piece, learning all your notes, and dynamics, and rhythms, and then you try and go back and fix all your bar placement, you're sort of doing the same work twice. So even though it may feel like a lot to think about at once, bar placement and learning your notes and your key signatures and thinking about new techniques and all that other kind of stuff all at the exact same time, if you will, just think about all of those aspects of a piece right from the very beginning, then your learning will be a lot more efficient. You'll get through music a lot faster. Okay, back to our metronome. 
We played uh, this warm-up exercise, learning our notes for measure 47 in half notes. Now we're going to play it in quarter notes. And of course you can repeat that bar. So now we're going to play the next measure of the exercise, exact same notes, but now with eighth notes alternating in your hands. And then finally, we'll play the passage as it is in the etude, which is 16th notes with double lateral strokes. Let's put it all together. Warm up number three. We're learning the notes to measure 47. Be sure to stay with the metronome and only start inching up the tempo once you're really comfortable with the full exercise at that first starting tempo. Warm up number four takes you through a very similar process with the notes in measure 54 from the etude. So we'll get our metronome going and we'll start with alternating quarter notes. Notice how I'm shifting my hands from note to note in the exact same way that we talked about in earlier lessons. As soon as I've played a note with one hand, I shift that hand to hover above the next notes that that hand is going to play. It's a really efficient way of playing, and as the tempo gets quicker and quicker, it will help you be more accurate with your playing. Now that we've played quarter notes, let's move on to playing that same passage with eighth notes. And finally, we'll play the passage as it appears in the piece with 16th notes, double lateral strokes. Now let's put it all together, warm up number four, quarter notes, then eighth notes, then 16th notes, double lateral strokes. Of course, as with all the other exercises, if it helps, you can insert rests in between each different iteration. You can do quarter notes and then rest two beats, eighth notes, rest two beats, and then sixteenth notes. It's whatever is challenging you, but allowing you to be successful and work on both your technique and learning the notes for your etude. By creating a simple exercise out of these couple of measures of the piece, you're simultaneously learning the notes to the etude and reinforcing these techniques that you're working on, double vertical strokes and double lateral strokes. Last but not least, we return to the topic of phrasing. This uh, lesson has an etude that gives you a lot of different instructions in terms of specific dynamics to play, when to crescendo, when to diminuendo. But don't just follow the instructions blindly. Listen to the harmonies in the piece and listen to how those harmonies create tension or provide release and listen to how the dynamics are reflecting that tension and release. You eventually want to be able to hear a harmony in a piece of music that you're playing and understand how that harmony is creating tension and release so that the phrasing, the subtle changes in how loud or soft each note is, reflect that those moments of tension and release. Also be sure to check out my performance of the complete etude from this lesson for more ideas on how you might phrase the piece. Thanks for watching. Thank you.